Jason, actually, but people do call me James. <laughs> and Simon as well, which is even weirder. <laughs> Excuse me, from Pierre Chani, and please, yeah. this is your uh, place and time for us to Thank deliver you all, the, all you that you know. Thank you. Super. Okay. Thank you very much for your warm welcome. <laughs> Okay, so thanks for coming. Seriously, guys, thanks for coming. I really appreciate your time. I want to give you something that's going to be of value to you, not just for the next two hours, but also, hopefully, for the rest of your life. And not only of value to you, but of value to your kids and to your relatives and to your friends. So you don't need to take notes. You may, of course. But if you would like to... Where the cards are? Not on the table. If you want to have a look, uh, the QR code here leads to a copy of the presentation. If you want to get a copy because there's some info in here you might want to refer back to. It's up to you. Okay, so it's called The Death of Stretching, quite dramatic, Grim Reaper and all that. Um, but I'm fairly convinced that in the next 10, 20 years, you'll hardly see anybody doing any passive stretching. That's not the only thing we're going to address today. Um, it's primarily about health in the workplace and about how people um, suffer from back pain and when they're working in an office environment. I'll slowly take more and more things off as it goes <laughs> on. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not joking. <laughs> um, We'll continue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll see who stays, who leaves. Um, so, so this is about avoiding the seven, what I call the seven deadly mistakes, okay, that can cause serious injury to you over a period of time, um, and the problems that are associated with them. Okay, so this is the prologue. Is there an alternate reality? Okay, the longer I've been, I'm 50 this year, and the longer I've been here, the more I've become convinced that there are many alternate realities, and each of us is living one of them. <laughs> um, so you've got to pay attention, use your skills of perception um, to have a look at the photo that's coming up next. This is a genuine photograph, everything that it says there is correct. Pay attention to your own thoughts. What you think of first of all. So this takes a little bit of detachment so you can observe yourself. Ready? Yeah. So this is a genuine photograph. Anyone seen it before? Mm -hmm. So it's a genuine Photograph taken in a genuine place on Earth, by the way, <laughs> not Mars or anywhere. <laughs> Ready for the next one? This is the truth. Okay. So what you saw was reality, but it was an image of reality. It wasn't actual reality. Images aren't the truth. Images are just what we perceive to be the truth. And that's very important when it comes to how people market to you, how you market to other people. And the things that we're told in everyday life that we just take for granted. So this is the illusion. 
when people say to you, oh, I'd have to see that to believe it, you tell them something, like, oh, I'd have to see it to believe it. But it's not necessarily true because you just saw something and you were kind of half believing it, perhaps. Don't believe anything you're told or anything you see these days with how exceptional media is. And there'll come a day in five, ten years when even professionals won't be able to tell the difference between reality and CGI. So this is the scientific method for anyone who's uh, not familiar with it. It's a, a process of thinking and experimentation whereby you can find the closest thing to reality to, for you. It's all in there. Yeah, we have to skip there's 84 slides on. okay so we already mentioned this so if you if you see the truth of those two pictures now well, that one picture now maybe there are other things in life that we're overlooking so this one's about form over function okay so form over function means when we're training how many people work out okay so about yeah about more than two thirds of you. <laughs> About two thirds of you. So if you do work out, then you may or may not appreciate these pictures. If you don't work out, you probably won't appreciate these pictures at all. But choose the one that appeals to you the, the most out of the two. I don't think either of them is very pretty, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I don't> <laughs> yeah, there's Ronnie Coleman, and there's Eddie Hall. Okay, so Ronnie Coleman, famously deadlifted, uh, 385 kilos, which is quite a lot. Uh, he was a powerlifter to start with, uh, but then he switched to primarily training for aesthetics. And aesthetics means what you see on the cover of Muscle and Fitness magazine. So he's training for big muscles, tiny waist, you know, all, all these things, bouncing pecs, all that stuff. Although Eddie's got quite bouncing pecs as well. <laughs> uh, but he deadly he holds the world record for deadlifting, which is 500 kilos. Okay. Um, so he's much stronger, much stronger than Ronnie was in his prime. Okay, in that lift, at least. But Ronnie, I met him 2013 I met Ronnie Coleman and he's an impressive chap, he's absolutely colossal. But he was walking then, now he's not walking. Okay? He's spent his last two surgeries, uh, his last three surgeries cost him two million dollars. Back, back and hip surgeries. Um, and he spent over three million, probably much more than three million, on surgeries. At about eight surgeries over the last. He's not walking anymore. No, he doesn't walk anymore. He can't walk. Okay, so he, you know, and after spending, you know, a couple of million, you'd think that would, uh, you think that'd get you walking again. But money doesn't buy you health. Yeah. Um, there's Eddie. Yeah, 536 kilos. That was for a, a half deadlift. Uh, it was slightly easier than a, <laughs> than a full deadlift, but none of us at that weight. <laughs> uh, he then turned to, after he got the world record, he then turned to selling supplements. Okay? And people criticised him on Twitter, on Instagram, he's got quite a lot of posts on Instagram. Um, and they criticised him for being fat. I was, yeah, you Eddie, well strongest man, but you're fat. You could, you know, you're no good. You, you know, you don't appeal. You're not aesthetic. You're not training properly because you're not aesthetically pleasing. Um, so then he decided he was going to become aesthetically pleasing. He's going to quit. World's strongest man. Or he, he decided to trim up first. So he got rid of his belly. Started getting six packs allegedly, <laughs> and uh, and retired from the world's strongest man in 2019, uh, reporting back problems as the answer to why he's retired. So that was him at 13, that's him at 18, and that's him at 30, which was last year. Okay, this is a post, he was basically accused of photoshopping his uh, photos to put abs on them, and this is him retorting, 
saying, oh, I didn't photo, you can read this on the, if you don't know anything. He's basically saying, oh, I didn't Photoshop it, I put all the work in. Personally, I think he didn't, but a lot of people think he did. So that's the difference. That was him in his prime, and that's him on the right. <laughs> it sounds weird to say, but in lifting terms, not in bodybuilding terms. Okay, and these are body shapes of Olympic athletes, many of them medalists. Yeah, most of them medalists. Okay. So form follows function. If you train a certain way, you'll end up looking how you train. If you spend long hours running, you're going to end up looking like this guy. <laughs> to a certain extent, obviously. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I end up looking like most of these guys if you do a lot of running. Okay? Because long distance running requires that you don't carry any excess weight. And the excess weight that you would be carrying would be muscle. And that slows you down. So your body gets rid of muscle. In addition to that, these guys have relatively high body fat percentages. And the reason for that is they're running long distances and they need to use fat as a fuel. So they've conditioned their bodies to store fat and use fat while they're running long distances. They look skinny. They look tiny, they look like not an ounce of fat on them. But as athletes, relatively high body, body fat percentages. Uh, this is more different body types. Downhill skier, it's quite, for me, quite good physique. Uh, for a guy, there's loads of these, I'll skim through. You can see here, all different body shapes. These are athletes, medalists, most in their prime, in their sport. This is what real bodies look like when they're trained to the pinnacle of success. And these are real people, not cover of fitness magazine that's airbrushed since, airbrushed into next week. So to me, it's interesting to note how different sports affect body shapes of different people. And that's given certain constraints, of course. None of us, no matter how many basketballs we dunk, are going to be seven foot tall. Right? There was a study some years ago, you laugh, there was a study some years ago that said if you play basketball, and it was a statistical study, it said if you play basketball for long enough and train in basketball for long enough, you'll become seven foot tall. <laughs> <laughs> Which is patently ridiculous, but statisticians, what can you do? <laughs> okay, so lots and lots of bodies. Okay, the most important thing about any kind of training or any kind of free time, any leisure, anything that you choose to do, even your work, you're choosing to do your work, the most important thing is for you to be 100% happy doing it and to enjoy every moment of it, every single moment of it, and to make a point of enjoying it. Your life will become much brighter. Okay? So first thing is you've got to choose something you enjoy doing. If you choose something you don't enjoy doing for other, other motives, like someone's pressured you into it, or you think, oh, there's loads of money in it, and you'll soon lose interest in doing the best you can possibly be, you will know, do the best you can possibly do and fulfilling your potential. Next, you have to make sure you don't get injured. The goal should be a long way off, the end goal, lots of little goals in between. Uh, and then just love the process of being you, enjoying your time. And um, the Buddha, I'm not a Buddhist, uh, more of a Taoist, but Taoism is kind of a philosophy. Buddhism is kind of a philosophy, really. Um, more than it is a religion. But the happiness is the path, the happiness is the getting there, the process that you undergo, striving to achieve something. Once you've achieved it, it doesn't really mean anything. Anyway. To you, maybe to other people. Okay, Marilyn Monroe's best makeup for a woman is her smile. Okay, that means if you're doing something you enjoy, your beauty of your soul, of your happiness, shines from the inside. Okay? It's, it's something about you that people can't put their finger on. It doesn't matter what size or shape you are, 
It's what's inside coming out, exuding from you that makes you or anybody attractive. So the illusion is that you're going to be structurally healthy okay, by training to look a certain way. But the reality is that if you do what you love and do it sensibly, you'll look how you train, which means you'll look how you want to look because you're training a certain way and you'll be happy because you're happy. And if you do it safely, you'll prevent back pain. Zipping and bracing. Anyone heard the, heard the argument of zipping and bracing? Vast argument in the fitness industry about zipping and bracing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who this guy is. This is a bit like this is a bit like politics, right? You can, two parties, and you can't really tell them apart. Not much between them. So zipping up. If anyone done Pilates, you done Pilates. So you've heard, you guys have heard this in Pilates. Zipping up, right? Lie on the floor. Imagine like you're trying to get a really tight pair of jeans on, and pull your pull your belly button in towards your spine. Okay, that's what they call zipping up. So this is supposed to be good for your back and support this core area. Bracing is something Stuart McGill, one of my idols, I don't necessarily agree with him exactly on this issue, um, but uh, he says contract your abdomen as if you're about to be punched in the stomach is better for protecting your back against injury. So these are two different modalities. Some people say you can train both, but then what happens in everyday life? You stop and go, oh, which one am I going to choose to engage when I fall over? <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't really happen like that. Yeah? So it's exercise time, guys. Can I have a volunteer person? Someone, preferably someone who's done Pilates. Come on, guys, come on, we've got one. It's not, it, there'll be other volunteers later. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Volunteer, volunteer, quick. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. help me out. It's only going to be for a second. You're very backward in coming forward, guys. You're really worried about me. Huh? Okay, so face me. Face me. I'm going to take my. See, I told you things. <laughs> Okay, so what I want you to do is pull your belly button in towards your spine, do your bracing up as far as you can, belly button all the way to the spine. And I'm going to put my hand on your hip here, my other hand here, and I'm going to pull this way. And I want you to stop me, but you mustn't cheat. You must pull the belly button in towards the spine. Okay? Can you go further? Yep, yeah, all the way in. Ready? Resist. Okay. <laughs> Zipping up and protection for the spine, right? Now what I want you to do, make as if I'm going to punch you in the stomach, right? Brace it really, really hard. Ready? Ready? Resist. <laughs> Which is stronger? <laughs> Second one's stronger. Okay, so bracing wins this round. So, what I want you to do, guys, quickly, like in two minutes, uh, within two minutes, grab a partner, probably the person sitting next to you. I want you to try that for yourself. You mustn't cheat though. When you go to come forward, don't, don't all of a sudden brace. Quick, let's go, grab a partner, try it out for yourself. <laughs> So try the so, maybe you can tell the difference between box A and box B. Okay, this is the reason for our experiment findings. Who, by the way, found uh, zipping up to be stronger? Not one person. Okay, who found bracing to be stronger? 
everybody. Super, okay. So that's, that's our experiment. We did a little experiment, and that's what it shows. Zipping up, just a little bit, a tiny bit, I could go on about it for ages, but a tiny bit of history is Joseph Pilates came up with this stuff because, long story short, he was not allowed to take his patients from a horizontal position to a vertical position. He was in a prisoner of war camp okay, when he came up with this stuff. And he was trained in doing spinal rehabs on very on, on immobile people. Right? And when he went to do further rehabs, the people were not allowed out of their beds because they were all Nazi pilots and airmen and things who had, who had spinal injuries. But when they got to the point where they could get up, they weren't allowed out of their beds because they were in a prisoner of war camp. In the Isle of Man, not far from my dad's, uh, my granddad's ho hotel, actually, years ago. So, this is which one? Box A is what? Zipping up or bracing? Zipping. Zipping. Box B? Bracing. bracing. If you stood on box B, probably nothing would happen. If you stood on box A, the whole structure will collapse because it's missing the fourth wall. <laughs> Uh, oh god, this guy again. Right, so this is zipping up and bracing. <laughs> but there's a third option. Boosting. So boosting means pushing the abdomen out. <laughs> yeah. Looks a bit weird. You've all seen the Smirnoff advert. <laughs> the guy walking down the beach. <laughs> Obviously, I don't do this at the beach. I do one of the other one. The second one at the beach. But this one, if I'm lifting anything, this is completely... Well, this isn't natural. I've trained it. It's now natural for me, but it wasn't natural. Okay, I had to train to expand my abdomen. I had to train my diaphragm to contract deeper. Okay? And this is to protect my spine. When I'm moving, when I'm lifting things in martial arts. Okay, so my background is Tai Chi and Qigong um, and martial arts training. So this is part of what we call steel jacket. So steel jacket is all about being resilient to impacts and injuries. Okay, so this is boosting. You want to try boosting? Grab a partner again, push your abdomen out, try that one out. Try <laughs> compared to bracing. Bracing and boosting. Push it up here. Push it up here. Push it up here. Strong. Push it up here. Push it up here. Push it up here. Push it up Push it Push it who found bracing to be stronger? Who found boosting to be stronger? Boosting. About the same, you need someone stronger to pull you over. <laughs> Okay, so this is the principle of the stick and the ball. Okay, so quite by accident, we have a stick and a ball. <laughs> just happened to be good that <laughs> So the stick represents your spine. Okay? Now actually, the character in Chinese, the straight character is a straight character, is called gun. Gun means stick, and that represents a spine that's straightened. Okay? So this represents the spine. Now, if there's nothing here to support the spine, it has a very long moment arm. Okay, the moment arm is the point of the axis to the end of the lever. Okay, it's got a, the moment arm for, actually increases from here, but the lever's long. 
If we stick a ball in front of it, all of a sudden you've got a pneumatic effect on the stick. So this is exactly the same. Go on, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Train for it, so. Um, so yeah, the stick and the ball. Okay, so this is why it works. You're creating a pneumatic effect in your abdomen. This is why, ladies and guys, will never admit it. When you bend over to pick something up, your button bursts off, or your press goes go poof like this. You're like, you're gonna lose some weight. It's not because you need to lose weight. It's because your body, unless you've trained one or the other two, your body is automatically engaging this to protect your spine. It's natural, fully natural. What I've done is enhance it a little bit with years of training. Okay, so the illusion is there's two sides to every argument. Stick and a ball beats a cardboard box, which beats a stick. Any questions so far? Sugar and coffee, I can tell you've gone deadly quiet. This is a, this is a, a <laughs> go straight to exercise time. <laughs> this is a, a, a subject close to all your heart, most of you, I imagine. Okay, it probably keeps a lot of you fueled throughout the day. So it is exercise time, so what I'd like you guys to do is well first of all i need a different volunteer and then you can have a play with this but i'll just show you what we're going to do so who would like to come and be a volunteer anybody doesn't matter quick come on someone else someone else come on break the ice for one person <laughs> it's a very easy one it's not as hard as the last one come on come on come on come on come on come <laughs> <laughs> super Thank you, man. Thank you for helping me out. That's awesome. Okay, what I want you to do, uh, let's move it a bit further away. What I want you to do is just put your arm out like this. Either arm, you've got an injury either side. You've got any shoulder injury? No. No, good. And put this one here across your heart there. And just keep this arm out. And what I'm going to do is push down. Mm -hmm. And I want you to stop me. Don't let me push you down. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. Let's pick a place there. Ready? Resist. 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 Okay, relax. <laughs> Put this in this hand. So just stick it across your heart like that. Same so your fingers are in the same place. Nothing's mechanically changed apart from this. <laughs> ready? Ready? Don't let me move you. Okay, don't let me resist. <laughs> this is two little sticks of sugar that aren't even in his body. <laughs> Stick your arm up again. Hand in. Ready? Resist. 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 One more time. Just for luck. Ready? Resist. Okay. Guys, there's sugar over there. Grab a partner, make a different partner. <laughs> Try it for yourselves. But this must be out of your radius. The sugar, put the sugar back in between tests. And stay away from the things the sugar. Okay? Try it without the sugar first. Guys, without the sugar first. You can try this on anybody. <laughs> This will work on anybody. This will work on anybody. <laughs> 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 well, they have to put it in his mouth. I'm giving this to play with Ja, 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 ja,
understand the effects that substances have on your body. They don't even have to be inside your body. If you just still don't believe it, you think it's some kind of trick. I didn't test all of you guys. You all tested yourselves. Okay, take this home. Try it on your spouse. Try it on your kids. Try it on your, maybe not your parents. They might have busted up already. But try it on people you meet. You will be astounded. And everyone will go, oh, it's a trick. You're tricking me. <laughs> there is a trick version. But we haven't really got time to go through it. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Maybe if, if at the end we've got time. So sugar is to humans what kryptonite is to Superman. Literally. This stuff is highly toxic, highly addictive, and it is in absolutely <laughs> everything. Okay, In everything. They add it to things because it makes you eat more. It makes you ill. Okay. These all, all these things are researched and verified. Okay, this is what it causes. They did a test. Uh, they did a test, uh, like a study. Gosh, must be like 15, 20 years ago now. And they gave blind tests to scientists, and sugar came out more addictive than uh, heroin. Crazy, and much more damaging. They're not in the same quantities, but as a, as a substance. Okay, how to avoid sugar. If you want to avoid feeling all this weakness, um, if you want to avoid your body going into deterioration, and you're not even eating the stuff, it's just near you, right? then these are the key things that you can do so you minimize the withdrawal symptoms. Okay, Bring in nuts and seeds, fruit mixture, most fruit mixtures are sweetened, so you need more of them. Get an unsweetened one, maybe from a health food shop. Just mix it all up in a Tupperware box. You have Tupperware here. Plastic box. And uh, mix it up and just keep grazing at it all day like a little rabbit. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Drink two or three litres of water a day. Bigger guys, three litres at least. Mm -hmm. Small ladies, two litres minimum. Okay? Read all the packaging. Okay, read what you're eating. Um, I did have another part of this, which I've had to transfer the thing. And it's, there's like 60, 64 different names for sugar that they refer to on packaging, so that you don't know sugar's in. Interesting. Uh, always eat breakfast. That'll stop you craving sugar so quickly. Uh, four to five small healthy meals a day, plenty of natural fats, olive oil, avocados, this kind of thing. Avoid artificial sweeteners because your body thinks you're taking sugar, so similar things happen anyway. Um, and they're much worse for you in, in the long term. And get plenty of rest, get plenty of sleep. Okay, one caveat. Okay, the exception is if you hit the wall. And it's only an exception because you need carbohydrate that's highly absorbable very quickly. Okay? My dad was a professional athlete and they used to call it blowing up. I don't think he called it bonking. I mean, probably should have. Uh, if your glycogen stores and blood sugar levels run low, you like it. You've seen them all on the marathon, right? These guys. Yeah, it's because there's literally no energy left in the body. Give him like a, a Snickers bar or something, in five minutes he'll be right as rain. Illusion! Sugar gives you energy. Truth, sugar makes your muscles weak. <laughs> <laughs> it will expose your back to injury. Coffee, guys, coffee. It's such a bad one, don't look so serious. <laughs> <laughs> this is not that serious. Improvements in problem solving. 
immediately after you've had a cup of coffee. Improvements in short-term memory. You become like a superior version of yourself for a short time after you've drunk a cup of coffee. Yeah. In terms of performance, mental, mental agility, problem solving, all this stuff. It blocks the, the way it works, blocks the adenosine. Adenosine in your brain, the receptors. Blocks the receptors, which means there's more dopamine. Dopamine is the feel-good drug. Okay? So you get big rushes of dopamine. So you feel amazing, you feel really confident. It's the same thing cocaine does, but cocaine does it to a different degree. Right? But caffeine does exactly the same thing. Okay? It stimulates production of adrenaline. Mm. Can make you aggressive. Right? <laughs> I want to run away. Uh, it's, it is addictive. It's highly addictive. Um, increase the problem of drinking lots of it. If you're drinking every day, your tolerance levels increase. So the more you drink, the more you need to get to the same level, okay, which is not necessarily an advantage. It, if you were to get toxicity poisoning, if you were to be poisoned, poisoned by caffeine in coffee or by the other elements in coffee, you would have to drink 74 cups of coffee in one day. Right? It's quite high. <laughs> but that's, that's not withstanding all the other effects that it has on you. And you've probably felt like yourself. <gasps> Anxiety, panic attacks, arrhythmia, palpitations, all the sweating, all this stuff is from caffeine overdose. Hey, if you want to get rid of coffee, <laughs> Do it slowly, don't just stop coffee, because you will have quite severe withdrawal symptoms. Okay? So cut your dosage down gradually. Again, two, three liters of water a day, or some rest, seven to eight hours a night. Exercise, get your circulation going, helps produce dopamine. Okay? Make you feel good. Eat healthy, we mentioned. A sauna, steam, plunge pool, detox. So hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. Get your circulation pumping. Yeah? and start getting rid of all the remnants of all these uh, hormones that are floating around your body. Do Qigong or Taiji in the morning. There's deep breathing exercises okay, that help metabolize coffee. I'm wondering whether to... Oh, I'm, back again. I'm wondering whether to tell you the other thing I will over there. Smoking metabolizes coffee quicker. Okay? Coffee prevents stomach cancer caused by smoking. Smoking and coffee have a synergistic relationship. They're symbionts. Right? They assist each other okay? in protecting you, weirdly. It's really strange. Stomach cancer is high in instances of people who don't smoke but drink coffee. Okay? But the smoking stops it in people who drink coffee. Anyone still smoking? Okay, I'm not going to ask. Coffee is good. Coffee is bad. That's the illusion. People say, oh, coffee is good. Coffee is bad. Coffee is not anything, it's how we use it that's well, bad. You have a, what was the name of that band? Goldie Looking Chain. You ever heard of Goldie Looking Chain? No? Guns don't kill people, rappers do. No? No, no, no. Coffee's the same. <laughs> right? It's the use of the coffee, not the coffee itself. It can be a good tool, it can be a bad tool. Right? Observe yourself. Be aware of what's happening in your body. Difficult when you're flooded with massive amounts of dopamine. <laughs> right? But if you observe yourself, if you can't do it, get a friend to watch you and tell you what you like on coffee. Okay, painkillers. Press it again. Oh, here we go. If this light came up on your dashboard, would you continue driving all day with the light on? Okay, you'll get a funny smell in the car. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, it's burning, man. My car's not working very well. It's not going very fast today. Yeah, if you've got a handbrake on the whole time, there's going to be problems. Well, this one. <laughs> <laughs> this one. I knew a guy who did drive around all day with his handbrake, but he just didn't care. But this one. He <laughs> drove around with this one as well until the car stops. But this one, you've got to do something. Otherwise, you're going to be stranded. Your vehicle. Your vehicle will not work anymore. <laughs> Pain is your warning light. Pain is telling you, is your subconscious saying to you, hey, 
I've got a problem and I can't handle it on autopilot anymore. I need you to consciously intervene, find out what's wrong and solve the problem for me. Okay? But most people, they take a painkiller and it's just like putting a bit of gaffer tape over your warning light and saying, ah, oh, it's fixed, can't see the light anymore. <laughs> it's exactly the same. These are what painkillers do to you. Read your labels, it's all written on there. Okay? Look at this one. <laughs> it's all written on the labels. Yeah? You'll go to the doctor. Oh, I'm feeling very well today. Oh, my doctor says, <laughs> take some painkillers. Oh, I already had a few. That is a strong one. It's easy for three minutes. Right. <laughs> anyway, I had a client, I had a client who came to me, so oh, I love what you do, but I'm really busy at work at the moment. I had a stomach problem. And he cleared his stomach problem. Oh, I feel much better now. I'm really busy at work at the moment. I'm, you know, I can't come for any more sessions. I said, you need, you need to have a few more sessions because we're not at the end of it. Oh, I'll be all right, I'll be all right. So we went away and I got a phone call about a year later. Oh, you are. Right? How are you doing? Oh, well, I've been in hospital for the last six months. Six months? What happened to you? Stomach ulcer. So after I saw you, I was that busy at work, I couldn't spare any time. So I just started taking painkillers to cover the pain, and it burnt a hole in my stomach. And I can't eat anything now, and they had to do a big operation to stitch his stomach up. Horror story, I know. But this is a guy who was too busy at work to look after his vehicle. Okay? You guys, look after your vehicle if you're not already. It's super, super important. How much work do you think he got lying, got done lying in a hospital bed for six months? You're the detective. Try and figure out the problem. It's a puzzle. Everything in life's a puzzle. Okay, these things are sent here for you to work out. Otherwise, it'd be really boring if everything just went our way, wouldn't it? We have all these challenges, all these adversities, they're just puzzles for us to get around and go, oh, yeah, did that one. Or go, oh, oh, oh. When you go, oh, 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 these things get worse, they don't get better. Right? If you don't sort these things out, they will return. Oh, stories that I've done with this as well. I took really, really super, super strong painkillers for for a wisdom tooth, right? Oh, it was so painful. And first of all, the painkillers worked. Granted, it got stronger and stronger. My girlfriend at the time had the strongest, I think it was Tylenol or something. I mean, really, she gave me this, did not touch it, didn't do anything to it, like nothing. And I worked on stomach meridian. <laughs> I just touched the points of stomach meridian, completely gone. One week later, it fell out on its own on its own, no pain, no blood, nothing. My mum, I put you on church, but my mum took it, she probably lost me. So I want that. <laughs> Solve the puzzle, guys, there is a solution. Where there's a problem, there's a solution. Bruce Lee said, the solution is the problem. And the problem is the solution. You just need to turn it on its head. Five. The last breath. The one you took just now, not the one you're going to take before you die. <laughs> and your first breath, everything in between. So your first breath was an abdominal breathing. You started breathing from the abdomen. That's my little boy Arthur. So that's him on the left, five months. That was like the other day. And that was in ten days. I didn't even get an arm. <laughs> no arm, okay. So babies, he's my biggest teacher. Right? He's my biggest teacher. Because he, he doesn't yet automatically breathe from his chest. He's still breathing from his abdomen. His chest is not even moving yet. Because he hasn't been stressed enough. <laughs> yeah, so deep breaths. He breathes quite, quite deeply, but slowly. Especially when he's asleep. You'll do it when you're asleep as well. But we've learned through stress to breathe from here. 
and you breathe like this. Tiny movements of the spine, not big enough to pump cerebrospinal fluid up and down your spine, which means you'll get acceleration of your vertebral discs and osteoarthritis in your spine. As time goes on, not tomorrow, not today, but as time goes on, you'll get it quicker than people who have been from their abdomen. So, Western doctors, experts in breathing, eight factors. Gases exchange, get plenty of oxygen in, plenty of carbon dioxide out. The lungs, just to throw one out for you, the lungs are the organ of fat loss. The deeper you breathe and the longer you exhale for, the more fat leaves your body. Fat is metabolized into carbon dioxide. It breathes, comes out of your body as your breath. Okay, so ancient Taoists said, breathe out for twice as long as you breathe in for. They wrote that like two and a half, three thousand years ago. And today, like a few years ago, they did some study that found that gaseous exchange, exchange mostly takes place on exhalation. Interesting how they knew. Um, so yeah, diaphragm contraction is important. Rib expansion as well. So you do this, you do this. Yeah. Diaphragm and the ribs should work together. Eat properly. Optimal muscle balance. This means that the senses in your body are all functioning correctly so that your nervous system can put the appropriate load on the muscles that cross each joint. Okay, that means you're balanced. Okay, positive attitudes and thoughts and emotions and uh, interlinked. Uh, healthy expressions of human mo movement and emotions. Okay, do something constructive with your body. Theory is all of these factors influence it. Uh, so with abdominal breathing, you're breathing from here. Your spine is massaged from the bottom to the top and it moves, it's manipulated. Okay, the internal organs get oxygenated, the blood moves around and they're massaged. You get more oxygen, there's twice as much volume here as there is here. Yeah. Nourishes your brain, your brain power. Abdomen gets stronger. There's six layers of muscle in the abdomen. Okay, not just this, but this too. It's another layer. Okay. More muscle, higher metabolism. They heal faster. Okay, guys, get up. Stand up, stand up. Just going to try quickly. So, first of all, <coughs> so first of all, breathe from the chest. Take a deep breath into your chest. And let it go. And again. And breathe your abdomen. Again. Control your breathing. Abdomen, then chest. Abdomen, chest, shoulder.
Oh, okay, good. So that's what you can do. You can train your body to take on more oxygen. The slower you breathe, the more oxygen you take in, the longer you live statistically. Nothing to do with drugs, nothing to do with smoking, nothing to do with alcohol. It's all based on how much volume of air you can breathe in and exhale. And all the statistics show it. It's more important than anything else. And it's free. You can spend five minutes doing it every day. I do it most days, some days. I don't do it every single day. Whenever I have done, whenever I remember, I just do two or three minutes. Two or three minutes a day. It's nothing. And you put years on your life. My grandma's Buddha, right? She had this little Buddha. And you go past it, a little, it was like this big. You go past it, when we were kids, you go past Oh, there's the Buddha, and Grandma going, rub his belly, no, oh, yeah, rub his belly, for luck, for money, and luck, oh yeah, rub Buddha's belly. Every time his Grandma, oh, rub Buddha's belly. And I always wondered as a kid, why is a Chinese Buddha such a big fat guy? I can never work out, why is he so happy? Because this represents his skill in breathing, and how long he lived. He's a bodhisattva. Right? He's a, someone who's supposed to be enlightened, come back to earth to teach people. Okay, look at this guy's belly, man. Amazing. The illusion is you spend hours and hours of cardio to increase your lung capacity. I cannot remember the last time I went for a run. I cannot remember. Honestly. The lung capacity has nothing to do with it. Yeah. Sure, some people I'd probably run faster than me, but I think my running days are over. I'd rather stand <laughs> these days. You can, you can increase your lung capacity. You can't go anyway, you can do it now. Two minutes, do it now. You, you will increase your lung capacity if you work on these things. Of course, there's a technique, we haven't got time to do it now, but it's there. Okay, chapter six the cramps. Who's experienced cramp in the last month? Who's experienced cramp in the last year? Yeah, more. Okay. Guy, very famous tennis match. Plachikova. Uh, she had serious debilitating cramps. She couldn't move her whole body, went like this. She went on to win the match. Anybody care to answer the question why we get cramp? What is cramp? What's cramp for? What's cramp? Come on, guys. The signal's too much. The signal's too much. That's a very interesting answer. The signal's too much. Okay, that's an answer. I'd ha we'd have to test it to see if it was true or not. Any other suggestions? There is not enough magnesium. Good, not enough magnesium. Sodium. Not enough sodium. What's another Minerals one? At all. <laughs> Minerals at all. Potassium, yeah, good. <laughs> water, good. Another one? Calcium, yeah, good one. <laughs> right, so these are all what they call the electrolyte theories. Or what I call the electrolyte theories. They're all to do with um, the balance of salts and chemicals in your, with the water in your blood. Right? But if this is the case, why do you only cramp in one place? Why do you cramp everywhere? If it's an electrolyte problem, why doesn't your whole body just go... Like and you fall like, like that until it goes. It never happens. Almost happens to her. But it never happens. Right? Why is it only one place? It's an interesting question. Ha! Mum told you. We've, we've all got a 
terminal, pathological fear of cramp. Each and every one of us. Because mum said to us, I'm pretty sure your mum said to you, everyone I've ever spoken to you, they go, yeah, my mum said that. <laughs> mum says, don't eat before you go swimming. You eat before you go swimming, you'll go in the pool, your legs will cramp up and you'll drown. Cramp equals death to a small child. <laughs> death. Oh, die. Yeah. Cramp. Yeah. Oh, you've got cramp. Oh, let me rub it out. Let me rub it. Oh, let me grab your foot. I'll move it around. Oh, I will rub it. Oh, look, get rid of it. Make it go away. Mum was right, by the way. If you eat before you go swimming, you have a much higher incidence of cramp and you can certainly drown. Um, why does cramp occur when we're in the water? Anybody got any idea? Try and think laterally. Any ideas? Different moves, uh, generally, maybe. Different moves, different kind of moves. Different kind of moves! Awesome. What was the one you said? Uh, the water is colder. The water's colder. Can be. Can you add out, Paul? <laughs> it can be. Yeah, it can be because the water's cold. And it can certainly be because of different movements. So the water's cold, vasoconstriction, not, enough, not as much circulation. And you tend to get more severe cramp. And yeah, because you're moving in ranges of motion in the water that you don't move in on land. Right? Yeah, you're using one hundred percent of the muscles. Yeah, yeah you're using oh, you're different sure. parts of the muscles, or well, in some cases, entirely different muscles. So, you're all of a sudden your nervous system is sending signals, or receiving signals from your sensors and mechanoreceptors in your body. So, what's the purpose then? Let's extrapolate that. Thought. It's a thought experiment. Think. I was going to say think Einstein. I don't. Think Plato. Right? It's a thought experiment. Right? What's the purpose of cramp? If 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 it's occurring because of the coldness, potentially, but only in one place. If it's potentially occurring because of going into different ranges of motion that you're not used to, what could the purpose of cramp be? Warning. A warning, protection from injury. Very good. Guys, he's on top of the class. Okay, so we've got two opposing views. Malfunction theory and function theory. So the malfunction theory is that two and a quarter billion years of evolution that we know about so far that allegedly have been measured in our DNA, um, have just suddenly malfunctioned for no apparent reason um, and it's something to do with your electrolytes. All right? Too much water, salts, potassium, calcium, etc., etc. Overuse injury. <laughs> yeah, so overuse injury is definitely a big one for athletes. Yeah? And function is a response to a weakness. Okay, to strengthen, to repair weak links, you almost said. Right? Is that, to my mind, it's potentially a really, really smart way for your body to organise the load distribution. And it usually does it at night. After your nervous system has collected and processed all the information that you've gathered through your senses during the previous day. So as soon as you go to sleep, nervous system gets to work. Oh, fix that, fix that. Oh, we did that today. Oh, God, I'm not sure we want to do that again and get caught out like this. Let's make that a bit stronger. Oh, we didn't use that one. Shut that one down. It'll save us a bit of energy. Like all these things, all these processes are going on every single night. You're recalibrating according to what you did the previous day and the previous week especially the previous day. Four stages in cram. Okay, first stage, oh, oh, it's like a bite. Yeah, and people go, oh, oh, oh like this. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, shit. Yeah, that 
that's just the first stage. Right? And I've observed this with thousands and thousands of clients. Okay? We'll maybe do a little bit in a minute. Secondly, the part called the tremble. So the tremble is starts going like there's the muscle starts like <laughs> you get you have slender tones here. Those electrical things you put on your muscles to make your muscles bigger, and they put you have a big thing like this goes on your abs <laughs> like this, and then you go like this, and it goes like this to get electrocuted basically for fun and to look good. Pretty useful in some ways. So it's like that. You go like this, going on in the muscle. The third one, the, the writhe, it's like, it's like you've got a snake moving under your skin. And it moves around. And it's absolutely, it's like a bag of snakes, literally. And when you see it, it's just crazy. And it moves around, not only in the same muscle, but to other muscles, move up into your back, different parts of your body, this thing's moving around. It's, whoa, what the hell? I wish I could have taken video, I wish I was quick enough to take videos of this when it happened. You wouldn't believe what it was. Okay. And finally, oh, I've come back from holiday. Yeah? Circulation's restored. If we test the muscle, the muscle is always, always stronger after it's gone through these four processes. And I say stronger, much stronger, much, much stronger than it was before. So to me, logically, that's implying that res those results that I've seen on thousands of people and tested on thousands of people, those results are showing or suggesting that cramp serves the purpose of balancing your body and switching on muscles that aren't doing their job. Not muscles that are doing too much. Muscles that you're using nearby. Exercise time. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, anyone had any back pain recently? You've all come to a back pain seminar and not one of you had back pain recently. That's awesome. Yeah. So, uh, was it long ago? You're still experiencing it now? You are, okay. Uh, just set your shoes off for me. I'll just have a lie on the couch with your head here soon. Uh, no, your head back. Head back. Oh, yeah, no. on your back. Okay, well. <clears throat> on your back? On the back. On the back. On the back. On the back. <laughs> okay, so pull both feet back towards you. Turn both feet all the way in. Turn your feet in for me, internal rotation. Okay, we'll try this one to keep your head down. I want you to turn this foot in and push your leg out to the, uh, Out of 10, what would you say your back pain is at the moment? Uh, that's a five. About a five out of 10 being the worst pain you've ever felt in your life. So five is pretty, it's not good, is it? Have a stand up and just try a squat for me. Let's see you squat before you intervene in any way. So you can stand there for us and face this way. And feet a little bit further apart. You need to touch your ears, keep your heels on the floor, and come as low down as you can. That's pretty good, man. That's a pretty good squat all the way up. Anyone having serious difficulty with squats at the moment? Anyone not know? Try a squat, guys. Just try a squat. So feet just over hip width apart. Touch your ears. Push your bottom back, keep your heels on the floor, muscle keep your heels on the floor. Go on. And again, this exercise right here, gosh, you guys are pretty good. <laughs> this exercise right here is the number one, number one movement pattern for human beings. Number one. Okay. And all you guys are pretty good, I'm surprised. Okay, most of you see this. <laughs> that's what my squat was like before I learned how to do it. Not that long ago, that's 10 years ago, 15 years ago. 
Okay, so let's test you. Uh, your squat's pretty good. Let's do it. I have a light hand on the back. So we're going to test the muscle. So there's an insufficiency here. So I want you to turn your foot in, your head down. I want you to push your leg out to the side as far as it'll go. So leg outward, push out, push out, push out, push out. No, I feel the, the cramp. You feel cramped straight away. Okay, so I observed an insufficiency on this leg. So in other words, what I saw was this. When I told him to turn his feet in, this happened. All right? Turn your feet in. <laughs> Head down. It changes when you look at it. Turn your feet in. Okay, relax. Turn your feet in. There you go. See yeah, it? Feel the cramp. See that? Okay, so we're going to try and keep him out of cramp at the moment. Push it outward for me, and I'm going to push in. I want you to resist. Push outward. Resist. Okay, and again, turn the foot in. Push outward. Resist. And relax. And this one. Push outward. As far as you can go. Ready? Resist. <coughs> okay, which one's stronger? Which one's stronger? Yeah. The right one's much stronger, isn't it? It's like it belongs to, it's like this one belongs to someone else. Anyone lost the leg? Turn this foot in, and I want you to push out to the side for me. Push outward. Nice and gently, about 30% of your maximum. Put your foot back, turn your foot in, and put, I want you to push into the crown. Outward, outward. Keep pushing out, push to the crown, towards the crown. No. Okay, keep going, keep pushing. <laughs> breathe deeply. Use abdominal breathing, breathe. In through the nose, out through the mouth, breathe. Try and relax into it, let it do its job. Okay, pain incident is subjective, guys. You know that? <laughs> There's the same sensor called a nociceptor that causes you to interpret either pain or pleasure. The same sensor. Only how your brain interprets the intensity is different. Which is why some people are into whoosh. <laughs> okay. I had a client. <laughs> Has it gone yet? Has it gone yet? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Better, better. better, relax. There you go. <laughs> so what's the emergency number? <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a second. So let's check the insufficiency. Turn both feet all the way in. Insufficiency is mm, a little bit less. Maybe turn the foot in and push outward for me. I'm going to push in, you're pushing out. Ready? Resist. Outwards. Still cramping? Yeah. Ah, let it cramp. You've got to allow it to go through the process. If you don't allow it to go through the process, it's not completed its job. Push now. Breathe deep, deep, deep. As far as you can go. Push through the cramp? You push into the cramp. Okay. Into the cramp, not away from it. Go so towards it. Do even more. Yeah. <laughs> and but the, the difference is how you're interpreting the sensation. Because from a small child, you've associated cramp with death subconsciously, right? As soon as you go into a cramp, ah, I'm going to try and shake it off and so get away from it. Yeah. yeah, because you're trying to fight it. As soon as you embrace it and go with it, and understand that it's doing something constructive, that it's, it's adjusting, recalibrating the integrity of your body, something very different happens. Instead of going, ah, like that, you start laughing. It's bizarre. Very <laughs> 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 It looks like a cry, but <laughs> Did it ease off that time or did, it, did we break its spell? It should get. I, I think I was in, in, in the second stage, but not the third one. Okay. So it doesn't always happen. Those stages aren't sequential. So sometimes they all happen, sometimes only one or two of them happen. Turn both feet all the way in. Oh, look. See now, something's changed. You see that? Turn both feet all the way in. See his range of motion has increased on this one. See it? It's by this much. It's there. 
push outward from the arm. Yeah, I'm going to test it again. Put this arm down my side. Push outward for me. Internal rotation. All the way out. Ready? Resist. Oh, I can't move him now. And I didn't do anything. He did. Push outward. Ready? Resist. No. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a double compensation. Yeah. So you had an old injury and your body compensates or an old problem or old blockage. It could be an injury, it could be something else. But an old problem that your body thought, I can't compensate for this anymore. So it put it on the other side mm -hmm. and allowed you to use this one. But the original problem was here, not here. Mm. So it was like a double blind. Okay. Right? So your body's compensated. It's like it's like your body's tied an extra knot. Right? To make stronger and stronger. Yeah? So we, what what we're doing here right now is starting to untangle the knot of compensations that are going through the whole of his muscle matrix. The whole of his body is compensating all over the place. And the place with the largest quantity of, of load-bearing muscles? This, this is the safety net. This is the place that your body goes to when all other options are used up. So athletes normally, who are super, athletes are super compensators. So they're able to go to extreme. Their bodies are incredibly adept at finding ways to compensate. Right? So they normally run into these issues in their late 20s, mid 20s, late 20s, 30s, some of them early 40s. And when they run into them, the body can't compensate anymore and they, they retire. Uh, some of them can train for longer, continue for longer if they figure out what's going on. You just have to look at it in a logical way. The human body is part of nature. It's not something separate. So let's do this one as well. Uh, I tell you what, let's leave that one for now. Let's test them again. Put your arms down my side. Arms down my side. Arms down, over. Hooky dog. And what's that? All right, outward. Turn the foot in. Keep pushing outward. Ready? Turn the foot in. Outward. Resist. And relax. And this one. Outward. Resist. And relax. So, you can see, we, I didn't do anything. He did it. He switched on a muscle here that wasn't functioning. And if you had to stand up now and have a walk around, out of 10 was your back at now. Yeah, better. Better. Yeah. Out of 10, it was five before. Like two. Wow, geez, so more than 50% improvement. <laughs> Fantastic, right? We might do a little bit more with you. Uh, <laughs> on the other side. <laughs> okay, so back pain from a five out of 10, which is really inconvenient really inconvenient, it's there all the time, it's inconvenient, to a 2 out of 10, which you forget about most of the time, right? That's, that's pretty amazing, what the body can do. So you could do that, or you could take painkillers, you could go have some physio beat the shit out of you, uh, you know, Thai massage, you could get the foam rollers, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I used to cell phone rollers. I mean, had to do it every day. Yeah, it was horrific. Um, does it make sense? Has anyone got a qu any, nobody's got a question? Anyone got any questions about that? <laughs> you can all do it lying in bed before you get up in the morning. How incredible is that? No more sick days. Sorry. <laughs> right? How awesome is that? The answers are in the question. Always answering the question. Oh, it was your exercise time. Everybody stand up. Okay, what I want you to do, let's do this one. I'll stand where you can all see me. So what I want you to do, just put your hands on your hip. And I want you to just make a big circle with your hip. 
big, big circle, big as you can with the hip. And when you come this way, I want you to start squeezing your zadocks. <laughs> Clutching your zadocks, as we say. <laughs> yeah. Hard as you can, and push into the end of range of motion. Anybody feel the cramp start? Feel something? Yeah, I can see someone. <laughs> Not yet? You need to go into the end of range of motion. You'll find most of these problems at end of range of motion where you don't normally go. Because I always said earlier about the swimming. End of range of motion, your nervous system goes, oh, I've got new information, I need to act on it now. Squeeze your glutes. Slowly, slowly, round the circle. Push your hip. Squeeze this hip. Push this way. Once you find it, relax into it. Squeeze it. Try the other way. End of range of motion. Go right into it. Here. Anybody got it? Yeah. No. Okay, let's do. I was hoping it wouldn't come to this, guys, but let's do a really horrible one. <laughs> so, what I want you to do is you need to turn to your left and do something for for a second. You need to do put your hands at arm's length on the person in front of your shoulders. Then I want you to. Squeeze your heel to bottom. Pull your knee back. Squeeze your heel to bottom. Squeeze. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's the one I was looking for. And breathe. Do you have knee problems? Do you have knee pain? Not, not. All right now. All right. Now. <laughs> yeah. okay. Squeeze it hard. Try to touch your heel to your bottom. Knee back, Bet to that could have heel to bottom, and slowly relax. So go. <laughs> and the other side. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Your hamstrings. Yay! One down. <laughs> Breathe. So try to, I know it's a big one, it's a big fight. It's like a <laughs> <laughs> When I first started doing this one, so, Work on that every day for a few minutes. You did like 10, 15 seconds. It's been like that for years. Yes. Yes. Just squeeze into it or relax into it. Just let it do its thing. Just let it go. Have a sit down, guys. <laughs> So if you allow the cramp to do its job, you'll relieve pressure from your knees, you'll, you'll get greater range of motion, and you'll be stronger in that muscle. But that's the dead of the muscle, I feel a pain. After. Yes, you're feeling a pain because your brain is interpreting it as a threat. Ah. Okay, at the moment, but as you do more and more of this, you'll be trying more and more to get it because it'll be more difficult to get it. Right, so in what I do, we're always chasing, in my own personal training, in my, in my students' training, in my clients' training, or my clients' therapies, we're always chasing the weakest link. It's like in, in cycling, there's a, uh, my dad was a professional cyclist, yeah, and we're on the track, there's a, a, a a race called Devil Take the Hindmost, right? And they're all they're all racing round, and every time when the bell rings, they'll sprint like crazy round the track, 
and the last person over the line is disqualified. So they go out. So gradually there's fewer and fewer and fewer cyclists until it just gets down to two guys. Right? So that's what we're doing here. We're trying to find the weakest link and eliminate that weak link as the weakest link. And we're doing it through allowing the body to do what it's been doing for millions of years. Does it make sense? And it's testable. You, go, you guys can, can use this tool. I didn't do anything. All I did was find the position, find the crab. He did it all. He did all the work. So it's finding is the tricky bit. Right? And dealing with it is quite tricky too. Okay? But this is a tool you can use today. You can use it. You can go do your other leg in the break. Right? Take you a minute and a half, two minutes, probably no back pain. Probably. But it might be more complex. Mm -hmm. than that. Maybe there's yeah. more than, called more than 600 muscles in the body. That's another story. So you really want. There we go. Okay, cool. <coughs> Illusion. Cramped bad. Cramped. <laughs> <laughs> Truth. Could be your best friend. Could keep you mobile and put years on your life if you allow it to do its job. Okay? And stop you from in back pain. Nearly there. Cool, a little bit to go. Nearly there. The final stretch. I was thinking rack when I wrote that. It's an ancient medieval torture device. <laughs> Similar to what has been, has been punished on. No way, heaven. I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> All of it, I think. <laughs> so, <laughs> why do we stretch? Anybody got any? Throw out some suggestions. Why do we stretch? The muscles flexible. Keep your muscles flexible. Keep muscles flexible. Yeah, that's certainly one thing that's said. Prevent injury. Prevent injury. Prevent us from hurting ourselves. Yeah, prevent us from hurting ourselves. Extend the range. Increase range of motion. Yeah. Any other reasons? People who have pain, they <laughs> that's a very interesting one actually that's a really interesting one people who like pain that's really interesting <laughs> if I forget to talk about that in a minute remind me to shout out people who like pain <laughs> and they're all running off the street <laughs> does it in fact Increase range of motion, loosen muscles, stop your muscles getting tight, someone said. Uh, does it cool your muscles down? Does it warm your muscles up? Does it relieve pain? Prevent injury? <laughs> Satisfy uh, masochists? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do an experiment. Okay, so um, who would like to be next? On the torture bench. <laughs> so we're just going to check a couple of things. So what I want you to do is just pull your foot back, lock your knee, and lift your leg straight up in the air for me, as far as it will go without bending the knee. Okay, and relax, relax, all the way down, keep your head down. And the other one for me, exactly the same. Lock your knee, lift your leg high as you can without bending your knee. Okay, can everyone see the difference in range of motion? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're not sure, we'll try it again. Just do it again, keep your knee locked high as you can go without bending your knee. And relax, so I'll try not to move as much as I possibly can not move. Left one. Okay, see the difference in range of motion? It's about this much. What's your name? Lucia. Lucia. So if we put Lucia in the desert, right, and we said, oh, you've just got to walk in that direction and you'll get to an oasis, Lucia. Mm -hmm. And you go, oh, great, thank you. It's not far. No, it's not far. 
and you start walking off, pretty soon you'll start seeing the same cactus again and again on your left <laughs> side. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be walking in a big circle because this leg's longer, a longer range of motion than this leg. Mm -hmm. So when you're walking, your stride is longer on the right than it is on the left. So something's happened in the past. So that's the theory. Right? We can see visually there's a difference in range of motion. So what I want to know now, what you want to know now, what you will want to well, well, would have, will want to know <laughs> in the past, is which one's stronger. <laughs> we don't have to make them fight, luckily. <laughs> Just pull that. <laughs> 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 Pull this foot back towards you. Pull this foot flex. flex. Yep. Yeah. Lift your head all. Uh, yeah. Lift your leg all the way up. Lift upward. Ready? Resist. Resist upward. Don't let me move you. Resist. Down high. And relax. And the other one. Ready? Resist. Which one's stronger? Right. Don't I? Do this one again. Head down. Head down. Head, leg up. Ready, resist, and relax this one, all the way up, high as you can go, don't let me move, ready, resist. Mm -hmm. Okay, the right one is strong. Right one feels stronger, okay. This one had more range of motion. Mm -hmm. So first of all, what we're going to do, switch this one on. Okay, this one's weaker, it's not got as much range of motion, so let's switch this <coughs> muscle on. So lift this leg all the way up, and keep... Keep going upward. Keep going. Keep breathing. Keep squeezing. Like you're trying to touch your toe on the top of that board there. Keep squeezing your toe towards the corner of that, that uh, whiteboard. Keep going. Keep going. It's flip chart. No? It's a flip, flip, no, flip chart on the whiteboard. Come on. All the way up. And relax. It's not easy, is it? And all the way up. It's hard work. Keep going all the way up. But notice it's no crowd at this stage. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Come on, ish there, ish there, ish there, ish there. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, let's see, ish there, ish there, ish there, ish there, ish there, ish there, ish there. And relax. You only need to keep it at end of range of motion for about six to eight seconds. You, your conscious mind, so I'm not doing this, you're doing this. Your conscious mind is communicating with the sensors called mechanoreceptors at the end, mostly at the end, throughout the muscle, but a great concentration of them at the end of range of motion. And your conscious mind is giving an instruction, okay, leg, I want you to go here. And the sensor is going, oh, leg wants to go over there. Oh, we've got to do some work. And they all start switching on. Ping, ping, ping. All the lights go ping, 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 ping. ping. Yeah, and they start coming on. Lift your leg up again. Keep lifting, come on, more, 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 more. Actually, but you've got to go to the range of motion. You lead with your mind, Lucy. That's it, you got it, go on. More, more, more. And relax, but we need it on for at least six seconds. So we're gonna do another two or three, we're gonna do another three repetitions. Okay, so another three times. So three lots of six seconds, uh, six, Sets of six, 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 there's a 36, 36 seconds about, six seconds rest. Keep going, keep going, keep going. It's all in all, someone has a better brain than me can tell me how many seconds that is, but it's less than two minutes. Relax. <laughs> I can't expend the brain power right now. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> Keep going, keep going, keep going. Last one, go, 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 go. Go on, that's it, that's it, there, there, there. Go on, go, 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 People sell retreats based on this stuff, right? Mind, body, and spirit. 
mind and body and spirit. Right? You're doing right now mind and body and spirit. Your heart is the emperor, right? the spirit, the will. Right? Your heart's saying, I'm going to do this, I want to do this. Right? And your brain, your conscious mind, is the general. Right? The general gives the orders. Right leg, up you go. I don't want to see you stopping. Your body is the army. Right? Body, mind, spirit. Okay? You're connecting these three things through movement. Okay? It's so important. You're not violating any of the limits that your body has set. At the moment, we will in a minute. <laughs> All the way up. <laughs> All the way up, ready? Resist. Am I pulling or not pulling? This is stronger, isn't it? Yeah, you think. Huge, this one. And this one, all the way up. Lock your knee. All the way down. Down. Follow. Relax, relax. All the way down. Left one. <laughs> so, this much range of motion. Yeah? Bye bye, cactus. Hello, Oasis. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you'll miss the oasis, you'll see the dead camel again. So how can you have the oasis somehow? How? Yeah, so they both have the same range. <laughs> <laughs> on, it's a good know. question. <laughs> <laughs> how do you think you can do it? <laughs> both in the same time? Ah, no. <laughs> <laughs> not both. Maybe. We'd have to test it to find out. I've never done both at the same time, but it's not good for you back. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this one. So you, you're, the range of motion now is greater on this side, and this one doesn't move. And I was pulling, wasn't I? You guys can't see, but I was, or can't feel it, but I was pulling, and it was not moving. Lucy's left leg is now really strong. And she didn't have to experience cramp to do it. She did it voluntarily. So she, she took conscious control, manual control, overrode autopilot. Okay, if we go into the range of motion, autopilot can take over cramp. Okay. Let's do this one as well. Let's do this one as well. All the way up. All the way, all the way, all the way. Keep going, keep going. Willpower, mind, body. Up, 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 up. Breathe. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Further, further. Touch your toe there. Relax. And again, all the way up. I don't need to be here, by the way. I'm just giving her a target. It's a sensation. She feels like she's pushing, but she's really not into me. Anyway. I'm just providing the target. Relax. <clears throat> and again, all the way up. Third round. You ever get the generation game here? Bruce Forsyth. No one's heard about it. No point doing a Bruce Forsyth impression there, is it? Could be anybody. <laughs> now relax. And there you go. Next one. So of course there's complicated, there may be complications, guys. It's, I'm not saying this is going to work for every single person every single time. But I have gone to parties where I've never left a small room and I've had an endless stream of people walking in. I travelled a long way to get that party. All the way up and then let me out of the room. <laughs> I'm up next, I'm next. <laughs> so don't tell anyone at a party that you do this, I don't want you to make the same mistake. Right? And relax. And again, all the way up. <coughs> and again, all the way up. So this song... It was six seconds. <laughs> it is. We haven't talk, spoken about it. All the way up. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. So the interesting thing about it is, and relax. Let's test this one. All the way up. Lock my knee. Ready? Resist. Resist. I'm really pushing. This one all the way up. 
Oh, ini. Oh, ya. Ready? Use this. Yeah. Stronger? Yeah. Straight range of motion. This yeah. one all the way up. Just one. And relax. And the other one. Okay. <laughs> Still, as much range of motion. So it's this. Just turn turn the other way around for us, Lucy, so they can all see the difference. So let's do this one first. And all the way down. It's just because it's a different part of the muscle, and this one will wear. Okay, see that? Mm -hmm. Relax. So what we're going to do now, lift this one up. You can relax, and I'm going to give you a stretch. Okay. So let me know when you get a good stretch. Okay. Should be relaxed, yeah? Yeah, you just relax. You just tell me when you're getting a stretch. I don't know what's going to happen because everybody's unique. I'm getting the stretch. Of you do a lot of stretch. I'm not doing my stretch during the pain. Let me know when you feel that it's gone nearly to the end of the stretch. So we're stretching now. This is called a passive stretch. So I'm doing, I was trained as a sports therapist and this is why you. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. 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 Yeah, that's what I'm Okay, we're going to keep it on for a few seconds. Now, when I did these for sports therapy, we were recommended 30 to 40 seconds. How soon is only 40? Okay, but we're going to do, we don't need that long. We just want to test the effect, so that was about uh, 15 seconds. Okay, so lock your knee. Lift this leg all the way up, keep knee lock, and all the way down. And the other one, all the way up. Ooh, interesting. And this one, all the way up. So you've lost about, would you say that about that much mm -hmm. range of motion? Mm -hmm. Lost this much range of motion. With this leg, all the way up. Pop the knee. Up. Ready? Resist. This one, all the way up. So, on Lucy, on this muscle, that way. Ready? Resist. On Lucia, on that muscle, did we increase or decrease her range of motion by doing a passive stretch? Decrease. Decrease. So it didn't give her more range of motion. It gave her less range of motion. Did we make it stronger or weaker? Weaker. We made it weaker. What we did do, however, was when we got into that area, the pain bit, right, when we got into that area, Lucia's signals from her sensors said, we're under threat, we're under threat, something horrible's happening. And it sent a message to the nervous system. And the nervous system then went, quick, release the endorphins. Release the painkillers, the opioid painkillers, release them. The body needs them. So you start feeling good. Oh, I feel quite good now. Yeah, because you've released opioids into your brain and they're starting to occupy the opioid receptors. So it's good for pain relief. This is good for pain relief. It's not good for increasing your range of motion. It's not good for the other thing. Lift the all out. Woo! Check again, all the way up, ready, all the way up, ready, resist. Ooh, it's coming back a bit. And this one, all right, ah, ready, resist. That ah, one's still strong, this one again. Ready, ready, resist. Okay. What we did do though, was we also increased the range of motion here that Lucia has zero control over. So we've taken her from the control here to this range of motion here where she has nothing. We just switched it off. Switched off her ability to control it. Which means if she goes into that range of motion when she's load bearing, she'll collapse. When this happens to people, they say, oh, do you know, especially when we get older, oh, I fell over, you know, I don't know, I don't know how it happened. I just, I was down there and I was on the floor. I, I didn't, I can't remember tripping over anything. It 
happens is when we get older, unless we address these issues, let's put it back strong. Oh yeah, knee. So all of you can do this on your own. Oh, look, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. I'm not doing anything. She's doing it all. Mind, body, spirit. But the spirit, you must have the intention. You must have the organization. And you must have the army to execute. Okay? You must execute correctly. Let's do one more. All right. And relax. So uh, we've just done it a couple of times. Technically, you do, should do it six. We're running out of time. But me, wow. Block me. Ready? Resist. No, ready. 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 Blutch. Oh, my Oh, ready. Blutch. Okay, range of motion. This one all out. Relax. And the other one. <coughs> <laughs> Super, they were perfect, nearly perfect. <laughs> so, no, exactly, you want to go straight to the oasis. So the illusion is that passive stretching, no matter how you do it, no matter how you do it, Passive stretching increases range of motion and decreases risk of injury. You'd have to test it. Lucia's just one person, she's not you, she's not me. Okay? You'd have to test it to see what the effects are. Some people, it doesn't decrease range of motion on some people, but it doesn't increase active range of motion either in my experience. The truth is, Passive stretching only increases passive range of motion, which is a range of motion you don't have control over, which means you're at risk of injury. However, they're all still teaching it. Everybody's out there teaching it. This is not my research, by the way. This is research that's been out there. If we think about the Taoists, now the process what I train in called Taoian Su, and the method of leading with the mind and reaching with the body. Okay, is thousands and thousands of years old. Studies that were published in the 80s and the 1980s, right, are all over this. All over it. And yet people, because it's difficult for some people to get their head around, yeah, still doing it, still doing it. But all you've got to do, guys, all you've got to do is think back to front. Remember, the answer is in the question. Epilogue. <laughs> Foam rolling. What was the thing you were I was you were gonna remind me of? What was the thing? Say again? People like pain. Oh, people who like pain. <coughs> yeah, foam rollers. Okay, so the foam roller thing. I uh, nearly there, guys. I um, used to sell these things, and I used to roll with them every day, and it was agonising. Ah, it was it was horrible, man. And uh, we all did it, and you know, under the illusion that it was doing us good and you know, I don't know if any of you have used these things they're massive at the moment it's just a bit of equipment that they can sell you it's something they can put a number on right that takes responsibility away from you and your body some some object that you can invest some bucks into and go right now the responsibility is on that object right that is what's destroying the integrity of your mind, your body, and your spirit. Okay? Because <laughs> your attention's outside of yourself, not inside of yourself. Okay, so these foam roller things are absolutely horrible. We used to do it and see you cry first. Uh, gosh, just horrible, horrible piece of equipment. Um, and the objective is to make tight muscles, to make tight muscles relax. 
Problem is, tight muscles are doing a job. Tight muscles are a symptom of a weak muscle elsewhere within the structure of the system. So tightness is secondary to weakness. You can even go so far as to say tightness is a kind of symptom of weakness. Okay, the load is put on a weight on a muscle that can bear the weight, as opposed to a muscle that cannot bear the weight or refuses to bear the weight. So forcing this one not to do that anymore causes a problem in a third area. We tie another knot in the problem, making it more complicated, more difficult to go out of, more long term. It's going to be there much longer. Okay. Or you're going to have an injury which is going to be even worse. Your body might even choose to injure you rather than to continue in this pattern. Right. Subconscious. Orthotics. Gosh, I had a motorcycle accident uh, when I lived in Spain. Smashed up my knee pretty bad. And I tried everything. Orthotics, pillows under my knees, uh, braces, creams, painkillers. Uh, special shoes, running shoes that cost like about 200 euros or something you know, at that time. Right? Orthotics, special things you put in your shoes, they were about 180 euros each at that time. Pounds, but oh, it was euros in Spain. But even in England, back in England, I was paying vast amounts of money for these things to be handcrafted to suit this. This problem with my foot. This is just a muscle imbalance, guys. You could fix it in like 30 seconds. This is a muscle imbalance. If you put this under there, this structure now cannot move. If it cannot move, it doesn't have a, your body doesn't have to expend energy. So it shuts down the ability of these muscles to do what they were doing when it was like that. So you get less function but immediately in the next few days few hours few days maybe a few weeks possibly a few months you'll get pain relief because your body's going oh, oh there's something there there's something supporting something between me and the ground maybe i don't need to send the sig the rescue signal anymore and your body then adapts and adapts and adapts and after a few months phew, rescue signal going oh it's, it's not right Sends a rescue signal, and you go back to the orthotic guy, and he carefully crafts you another pair. It's another couple of hundred bucks, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nuts. Mm -hmm. Oh, the Tron. You ever see the from Tron? This guy is up from Tron. Okay, these are interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, I like them for postural reasons. They can really, oh, I stick some of these on. And your posture will change. Oh, your, your senses get the message. Well, I need this posture. I need this posture. Um, otherwise, I don't really like them because they're fooling the muscles. They're fooling the muscles into doing things they wouldn't otherwise do. So in my opinion, they probably more rapidly lead to more complex injuries. We mentioned earlier, Thai massage, these things. Where if you force the body into a range of motion, muscles switch off. Muscles switch off, you get tightness again. After the, after the endorphin effects have worn off, a couple of days later, oh yeah, or a week later, I've got the same problem again, or a worse one, I want it somewhere else. Spiky balls, same thing, switching off things that are doing a, a, a useful job. Guys, thank you very much for letting me help you. What I implore you to do is to take in just one of these things and employ it today or tomorrow and try and employ it every day if you can remember some of these things like i said if you go on the all this stuff the same presentation all of it's there will remind you what we spoke about it's all on the thing follow the qr code and you can get a download for it um but just employ one thing and improve your life and the life of the people around you who you love and who love you okay you can really improve things easily Sorry, you didn't go out to do the other side, but you can do it yourself now. You know how to do it. <clears throat> so that's me. Um, if you want to get in touch, if you've got any more questions, give us a shout. If you liked what we spoke about today, like me on Facebook. I've been on.
guys, please give yourselves a round of applause for absorbing at least one thing today. <laughs> Questions before we go? No, all questions. Thank you. Long story. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a question. Yes. Well, if I'm not supposed to use those prosthetics, um, how should I get my knee to be so flat? You know, I need to. So, just do, so the answer is in the question. Really. How did you do it just now? Well, I had an injury when I. Oh, okay. <laughs> By asking it to do what you want it to do. That's it. And having the heart to follow it through. Because when that cramps. <laughs> yeah. But the more you do it, the less it's going to be uncomfortable. And you'll get to a point where you physically can cramp it. Because it's imbalanced. Yeah, you're welcome.